I know who killed Bunny Folger. Do, 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 do. Rebecca, if you haven't been here before, welcome. So today is another Only Murders in the Building video. It is episode five, and the season is really heating up, guys. Like, you'll have to let me know what you think so far in the comments, whether you like it as much as the first season, or whether you think, like, the second season is better or worse or whatever. If you haven't watched up to season two, episode five, then do not watch this video. I have a whole bunch of videos from last season and this season all about the different episodes and clues and you should definitely go check them out because these clues add up and eventually they're going to help us figure out who the murderer is so go check those out before watching this video and then you can come back if you like these types of videos then make sure to hit the like button and subscribe i'm trying to hit a thousand subscribers by the end of this season and we are almost halfway there so every subscriber helps and once i hit a thousand subscribers youtube will start monetizing these videos and giving me a little bit of adsense and that would be really really helpful so I appreciate every subscriber. Thank you so much. And come hang out with me on Instagram as well. We have a good time over there chit-chatting about only murders in the building as well as other things, just my daily life. And I would love to see you there. Also, if you have any theories or anything and you don't want to publicly comment down below or your YouTube is in public, feel free to message me on Instagram and let me know what your theories are. I literally love to hear them and I love to share them on here. So let's get into this video. So the first thing we learned in episode five, or the first little thing that caught my eye was Will says, turns out you can hide a secret from my dad. All you have to do is not know what you are hiding. And we learned something big in this episode and we're going to talk about it a little bit more later, but there was a lot of alluding to it throughout this episode. The intro is from Will's point of view. I like how they do these intros from different people's point of views. Like I think the last one was probably Lucy. This one's Will. Last season they did Jan. They've just done a couple different people and it's always really enjoyable to get like a sneak peek inside look at a different character's mind. So the next thing we learned is that Charles has gone to visit Jan. We know that from the last episode because the very last scene is him saying, hello, anonymous caller. And so it's really exciting to see her back in this season. I love her as a character. I know that she was the murderer last season, but Amy Ryan just does such an amazing job playing Jan. And I just really love her presence. So I'm excited for her to have a little bit of influence this season. So Charles comes to her and he's like, listen, because you're a psycho murderer maniac, I thought that you could help me with this case because we're kind of stumped. And she says, okay, tell me about the case. And he says, the killer composed the murder scene, knitting needle, knife, blah, blah, blah. And Jan says, listen to what you just said. The killer composed the murder scene. That's who you're looking for, a storyteller, an artist. So I think that is a big clue, but I also want to be careful that we don't take it too literally because the immediate person you think of is like, Alice she's an artist it must be her and i think that you got to think more like on a smaller level because it's not going to be someone who's too obvious so she says this person wants to be close to their work so she's asking charles does anyone have a new friend and of course like i mentioned alice pops into your mind mabel and alice have been seeing each other alice stepped into mabel's life right after the murder of bunny so who's been sticking around the trio a lot and this is a question that we can kind of ask ourselves because i think it gives us a good idea of who the murderer could be when trying to figure out who the murderer is there's a couple of things we can do. First of all, it's now episode five. So I think it needs to be someone who's been in the season thus far and has like shown up in at least two, maybe three episodes. So, you know, people who we haven't seen very much of, in my opinion, are probably not gonna pop up and be the murderer. So I think the murderer is someone that they have concentrated on, but that isn't so obvious that we would immediately be like, oh, it's them. But in terms of people sticking around the trio a lot, we've got the classic super fans that are hanging around the trio. We've seen them a couple times. We've got Howard who's been hanging around the trio quite a bit. We've got Alice who's clearly been hanging around the trio. And we've got Lucy who has clearly been hanging around the trio. And she was only in one episode, but it was a really big, like it was the entire episode. So she's definitely one to watch as well for people who have like come into their lives post bunny murder. Then we see Mabel walking through the Arcata and she's chatting to Alice on the phone 
and immediately we see that Alice is wearing combat boots, which resembles what the person stepping out of the elevator in the other episode was wearing. And so this is another reason why I feel like the murderer isn't Alice, because immediately they've been like, artist, someone hanging around the trio, let's put some combat boots on this girl, like, you know, we know that she'd be interested in a painting. So I just feel like it's too much direct finger pointing at Alice for it to be her. I do think that she's involved in something sketchy, but I don't think that she's our murderer. Next, we see that Mabel has found a grate that leads directly into her apartment. And this is a part of her apartment or a perspective of her apartment we've never seen before. It's kind of like a closet. Then we see her bed and past that, we can see like where Bunny would have stumbled out of and her living room. So it's possible that someone like beelined into that grate to get away when Mabel came into the room and discovered Bunny. It's definitely a way that someone could get in and out of her apartment without really any problem. We also hear Alice invite herself over because she's having a party and her roof is leaking. And so this is kind of an allude to maybe she wants to get into the apartment building. Maybe she is interested in seeing the space where the murder took place. Or maybe it's innocent. Maybe she just needs a place to host the party and she knows Mabel has like this giant apartment <laughs> that's basically empty. So the next thing we see is the matches from the pickle diner that Mabel finds within the bar catacombs, kind of like right next to the grate. So this definitely suggests that the person who was interested in the painting, who was meeting with her at the diner, was probably involved somehow in her murder. And we see something later on in this episode that suggests that it is the person who met with Bunny who like grabbed these matches. So again, we're continuing with the Will storyline, taking an ancestry test, asking Oliver to take it, and immediately it's pretty obvious to us that something funky is going to happen with this ancestry test. Something is not quite right here. And again, we hear Oliver say something along the lines of, it's hard to believe that my grandson is blood related. He's so, you know, mathy and I'm so artsy. So, you know, hint, hint, nudge, nudge. They're really shoving this one down our throat. Now, the next thing is that our trio is in the pickle diner where they are hanging out. And we see that their super fans are right there hanging out, kind of <laughs> eavesdropping on them. And they're, you know, chit chatting about who they think the murderer is. And Marv says that he knows about the passageways because he does mold removal in the building. So that's super interesting that Marv is aware of the passageways, that he hadn't mentioned it previously, knowing that they're looking for a murderer who's going in and out of apartments. And someone also mentioned that he has a mask in front of him on the table. So, you know, Marv, looking a little suspicious. He also mentions something about his daughter. Because Mabel is dating Alice and like they're chatting about it, Marv is kind of like, good for you, like so progressive. My daughter also just came out. We also know he's estranged from his daughter. He doesn't have a great relationship with her, if any. And these are just some facts about Marv. He doesn't like women in power, he's mentioned. Oftentimes they have suggested that the super fans are off or weird or look a little bit strange. Next thing I wanna talk about is the 70s vibes party that is happening in Mabel's apartment when Oliver brings out the Son of Sam game and it literally transforms into like the 70s and it's so, so cool. The costume design is incredible, the space design, it just was like such a cool moment in the show. I really enjoyed it. So they're playing the game and people are, you know, dying and possibly in bad taste since Bunny literally died in that spot. So people are like fake dying in the same area. And someone actually pointed this out and I'll put the photo up, but we actually see Alice's card before the end of the game and she is the son of Sam, at least in the, at that point. So Oliver is trying to figure out who the liar is and he starts kind of like going after Alice saying, I know you're tell, you're playing with your hair. And she gets really defensive and is like refusing to just be like, yeah, you got me off the son of Sam. And instead kind of launches into this, you got me, I'm a fake. Like I'm not really this posh British artist who went to Oxford. I'm this daughter of a plumber that hurts my art reputation and she kind of like goes into this backstory and whether or not we can even really believe her is 
it's really hard to tell because she's already lied up until this point. And then she hands her card over to Oliver and he says, oh, I could have swore she was the son of Sam and she has a blonde card. And so somewhere along the line, she switched her card because we saw, you know, here that she was the son of Sam. So once again, she's playing a part. She's lying to us. And we learn this for sure when closer to the end of the episode, we see the son of Sam card in her bag. The next thing that I think is kind of important to point out is that Mabel is not the most reliable narrator in this story. First of all, we know that that night, whether it was trauma or, or the drinks or something else, she was kind of having a hard time remembering what happened. We see that Bunny comes out from the side, we see that she whispers 14, and then later Mabel says she also says savage. But then later in this episode, Charles and Oliver are kind of like, well, what if she didn't say savage? What if she said passage? And Mabel is like, well, I guess it's possible. It's just so hard to remember. So something is going on here where Mabel really can't remember what happened that night. It's really not clear to her. And that's kind of interesting. Like there's something about the perception of her own memories. And is it because she doesn't want to remember? Is it because she did something? Is it because she was kind of drunk? Like we're really not sure or the, just the trauma of the situation. But it's definitely a little suspicious that she doesn't know and she's certainly an unreliable narrator. So trusting what Bunny said based on Mabel's point of view is probably not the best tactic since we can tell she doesn't really know what she's talking about. Then another clue is that Charles and Oliver are going back and forth talking about the scandal that happened and kind of like mentioning different names and saying, well, you can't forget this person, you can't forget this person. And finally, at the very end, they mentioned one last name. I forget what it is, but I'll put it up here. And it is a secretary. You can't forget about the secretary. And who do we know who's a secretary? Howard. Howard is the secretary of the board. So is Howard the person we should be keeping our eye on? Because he's the secretary that you shouldn't forget. We also see someone slip money under Bunny's door and we immediately see that it says for Ivan, my favorite. And Oliver immediately sees it and goes to see Ivan and is like, what's up with this super suspicious note and cash that you slid under Bunny's door? And Ivan does admit that he returned the money because he had heard them talking about Bunny in the diner and was nervous. He didn't want any trouble. This doesn't seem like something a guilty person would do because the note literally says to Ivan. Like it's very obvious who would have slid it back under the door, but it does give us the opportunity for Oliver to talk to Ivan and see what he knows, kind of get a feel for what's going on in his perspective. We see that Ivan leads him to the back room and gives us another clue this ancient looking video footage of someone meeting with Bunny and her getting angry with them and kind of going like Pff, and walking away out of the diner and this person following her and not only following her, but stopping and picking up a set of matches from the pickle diner. The matches that Mabel found in that grate. So it is very, very likely that the person who Bunny met with at the pickle diner is also the person or one of the people who were involved in her murder. So that is huge because it almost definitely connects the painting theft and the person who murdered her and means that it probably wasn't two separate things happening. Also looking at this person that Oliver saw on the screen, they look very manly. I mean, it could be someone who's wearing like an oversized coat. They seem pretty tall. They have like a tre what seems to be kind of like a trench coat or a longer coat on and like maybe a hoodie underneath and maybe a beanie. So it's seeming like a man to me, but it could, it could definitely be like Alice wearing something like that. But my point is if I had to guess by the way the back of this person's head looks, they are really looking like Marv to me. And I, can you tell I have a theory about Marv today? Like Marv is really suspicious. There are a couple things that we learn at the very end of the episode. One is that Alice was the son of Sam because she hid the card in her bag. But something that some people I feel like are kind of overlooking is that on top of the son of Sam, Sam card, there is a little package of tissues that say 
Zinda, X-I-N-D-A, and it has a bird on the front of it. And this could be a red herring, a mislead that they intentionally put on top of the card to make some of us question, you know, what's going on. But there's a couple things. One, X-I-N-D-A, Zinda, what does that sound like? Cinda, who do we know is named Cinda? Cinda Canning. So is this kind of pointing at Cinda Canning? When you look up Zinda and the brand, although this one is specifically a package of tissues, People have mentioned that it is an elevator brand as well as a climbing or grappling brand. So that's kind of interesting. We know that we've heard a lot about secret elevators and elevators in general. Zinda, I think I'm saying it right, but it also looks like it is made in China. It's a Chinese brand. And then the last and most obvious clue is that they are tissues. Does Alice have an allergy that we don't know about? Maybe she's sneezing in the catacombs. So it's just um, interesting that there's these tissues there that are right in plain view of us. The bag doesn't seem to have anything else in it. I think that everything that the production crew does is intentional, whether it's intentionally to throw us off a scent, intentionally to make us look at Cinda canning, or just intentionally to confuse us. Who knows? And the last thing that we learned that has been pushed this entire episode is that Will comes back with the test results and he says that he's 50% Greek. And Oliver's like, I'm Irish, man. You can't be Greek. And Will's like, are you sure you're Irish? And who do we know that's Greek in this show? The Demises. Teddy Demas. And we even see a little snippet of Roberta and Teddy giving each other a look. And so it is discovered that Will is probably the son of Teddy Demas and not Oliver's son. It is questionable whether Teddy knows that Will is his son. There seems to be, there seems to be a knowing look being passed between Roberta and Teddy. But yeah, this is something that I didn't see coming. And when you look back at season one, the song that Teddy makes Theo listen to that's like, My Boy Bill, within that song, the song says a lot, B Will Bill, Will Bill. And Bill is a shortened name version of William, which we're assuming that Will's full name is William. So it's really interesting that that was probably a hint that Will, Bill, William, my son Will, Will Bill. It was a shout out to the fact that this is now happening. That's crazy. I love that they kind of did that, that there are clues in last season that are super relevant to things happening in this season. And a lot of people have actually been mentioning the father-son slash half-sibling relationships that have been brought up in this show. You've got Charles and his father's relationship. You've got the fact that Charles might be half-siblings with Bunny. You've got Will and Oliver's relationship and now Will and Theo being half-siblings. You've got Jan and her half-sister. So there's a lot of interesting familial relationships happening and we are definitely going to see how those play out. So now let's talk about my theories. We always need to know who, what, when, where, and why. And we know what Bunny's murder and we know where in Mabel's apartment slash possibly in Bunny's apartment. But we don't know who did it we don't know why they did it, their motive, and we're not 100% sure how they accomplished it. I.e., we know that they stabbed Bunny a bunch of times with a knife and then with the knitting needle, but we don't know how they got into the apartment or what they were really after. I have three people who I think could possibly be the murderer. Howard, Marv, and Uma. So I guess let's start with Uma, who is like the least obvious and the least suspected on my list. There is a small quote that Charles says, Bunny valued the Arconia over everything and if she thought she knew better than you it's because she did and that meant that some of the people closest to her became really angry with her and so that kind of suggests that someone very close to her was a part of her murder and Uma is her best friend. We also see the person stepping off the elevator has very small feet, at least from the perspective I was looking at in that moment. And you know, Uma isn't a huge woman, so it makes sense that she has pretty small feet. We also notice she has this like outlandish reaction to the painting being gone, kind of like 
overblown and almost like actory like she knew it was gone and was playing up the feeling of it being gone and we know that she was interested in the painting and that she had a key to Bunny's apartment so these are all things that make her suspicious but I don't have a fleshed out theory of why she would do it. We also have Howard who is very close to the trio right now, has been there when they discovered the painting in Charles's apartment, has been there when they discovered the knife in Charles's apartment, definitely seems like a suspicious person, suggested that Nina is the murderer and pointed fingers at her, also mentioned that he knew Jan was the murderer last season by episode 8 and never said anything because he wanted to see how it played out, as well as last season Jan pointing her fingers at Howard. So is there some sort of relationship there? Did they work together? It's almost certain that the note that was in Tim Kono's garbage in the first season is a note that Howard wrote. So was he a part of the Tim Kono murder and then things went sour and he and Jan turned on each other? Howard is definitely seeming suspicious. He's got that bruise. So what would cause him to murder Bunny? We don't have a definite storyline, but possibly he wanted the painting and he decided the only way to get it was to kill her. Possibly they didn't have the best relationship since she had said that he had a lot of complaints against him and would possibly be evicted. The other thing, I've been rewatching season one and after Howard faints after seeing Charles's nosebleed when he's with Mabel and they're visiting his apartment, Charles and Mabel are getting on the elevator and Mabel, you know, was talking about what happened and Charles is like, oh, you believed that? Like, I still think he's acting. So is it possible that Howard was acting and actually doesn't faint at the sight of blood? Howard really seemed like he faints at the sight of blood, but also it wouldn't surprise me if that was all acting and he doesn't faint at the sight of blood and it was just to secure his innocence in that season and possibly in this season, because if they think he faints at the sight of blood, they're gonna assume that he couldn't possibly be the murderer. So does he really faint at the sight of blood? Let me know what you think in the comments down below. The last theory I have is that Marv is the murderer, that Marv murdered Bunny, and here's why. So Marv, in this episode we hear A, that he has been in the Arconia Arcatacombs and that he knows of them because he does mold work in the building, so that would definitely take place behind the walls. So he knows the catacombs. He also says that he has an estranged relationship with his daughter who happens to be either gay or bisexual or who has recently come out and that he's dead to her for whatever reason. And we also know that he's a part of the super fans, that he loves the podcast, and that he loves the trio, or at least is a fan of the trio and the podcast. My theory is that Marv murdered Buddy, and what happened was he went after Buddy because he wanted the painting, but also he wanted to be involved in his favorite podcast only murders in the building. He wanted it to have a second season, he wanted to keep it going, and so what better way to do that than to murder Bunny and give his fave trio the murder weapons as a kind of like crazy person, you know, wanting to be involved and almost like wanting to be found out because he wants to be a part of the podcast too. Like he wants to be on it and what better way to be close to your art form and the scene that you created than to listen to it on your favorite podcast and plant the weapons and the things that you found in your fave trio's apartments, planting the painting, planting the knife, being surprised that they haven't figured it out yet because you've literally been giving them the clues. And the second part of this and the part that connects to the artwork is that Marv has been the person trying to get the painting from Bunny and he wants the painting A because it's very valuable and B because he has an estranged artist daughter and that would be Alice. And I've seen a couple of people talk about the possibility that like Marv and Alice are related and that's his daughter. I do think that this is a little bit of a stretch, but if Alice has already lied about her identity, who is to say that she isn't actually just a regular schmegular American and that she's not using this British accent to make herself look like posh and special and artsy. And so it wouldn't surprise me if later on we find out that Alice is actually American, she doesn't have any accent at all, and that she has just been trying to find success in the art world via pretending to be this character. 
And so she is Marv's strange daughter, another familial relationship happening in front of our eyes. And in order to win back her love and appreciation, he has decided he will steal the painting for her. And the only way he can do that without getting suspicion thrown his way is by going ahead and murdering Bunny. And while he is stealing the painting, either in the moment or beforehand, he decides he's gonna take out Bunny as well because A, she is a strong, powerful woman that he has already stated he doesn't like. He has seen her around the Arconia kind of harassing his fave trio, and so he decides that he is going to take Bunny out because he doesn't like her. And so he steals the painting and he brings it to Alice and either she has told him that in order to gain her love again, he has to bring her this painting or he brings it to her and out of shock and fear, she decides she needs to recreate a duplicate to make it look less suspicious. So, so Alice receives the painting from Marv, who is her father, and she's either surprised by this or she has manipulated him into doing this crime for her. She gives him a replica that is a fake and tells him that in order to keep suspicion off of them, that he should return the painting to the Arconia. And while he's doing that, he decides that another clue for his fake trio is this painting. He's gonna drop it in Charles's living room and you know give them more hints to who the murderer is. And this would explain why the killer is toying with them and not just calling the police, because maybe he's not trying to frame them, maybe he's trying to give them what they need to have a successful podcast. So that's my little crazy theory that is why I think Marv is possibly the murderer slash art thief. Also, when we see Lucy in the art catacombs, we see a figure who I really think looks like Marv. It seems like that person is the right height. They also seem like they might be older, they might be white. There's that really like outrageous sneeze happening. And so, yeah, I think that that was Marv. And some of you have pointed out, and thank you so much for mentioning this, that the building actually doesn't have a 13th floor because a lot of buildings are superstitious. So they just exclude the 13th floor, so it goes 12, 14. And so it's possible that Marv ran only up one flight to the 14th floor where Charles lived. So it would have taken less time to get from one floor to the next. So yeah, that is what I think. That is my theory so far. Let me know your theories down below. You know I love to hear them. And thank you so much for watching today's video. If you liked it, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, give me a comment, hit that bell notification, all those youtube -y things. And I will see you for episode six of Hulu's Only Murders in the Building. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.